Number nine, just in case you are in a track. Focus on supercomputing education, also called uh, thinking parallel. This session has been organized by Jose Luis and myself. Jose Luis is the head of the supercomputing center in Extremadura and, and the director of the supercomputing center here in, in León. Um, there will be four presentations in, in this track. One of the papers uh, the author has not been able to button. So the idea is to make uh, short presentations. I will ask uh, the speakers to spend uh, 15 to 20 minutes for this presentation, and then we can uh, have a small break after this presentation. So the, the first presentation is uh, titled Supercomputers in uh, Educational Process and it is uh, presented by Alan Fernandez. So <coughs> I, I will show you, in case you uh, are not aware of your time, I will show you the cards in the time. Okay. Sorry. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, First of all, I want to thank the organizing committee uh, for letting my group to present the, the result of part of the research. Research of my group, uh, thanking in advance the help of the organizing committee. Uh, we are these members. My name is Alvaro Fernandez, and the other participants are Camilo Fernandez, José Ángel Miguel Dávila, um, Miguel Ángel Conde, and Vicente Matia. We are the group that have been uh, investigating about this phenomenon of uh, education in supercomputing. Okay? Uh, first uh, of all, I want to talk about the aims, the aims of the study. Uh, it's, just, it's, it's very simple. We pretend to uh, describe how important is the implementation of supercomputing in the educational, pro in the educational process. Okay? We haven't seen uh, many lacks in this part of education, in this type of education. Uh, we, we have seen many profiles of people um, that require this kind of, of training. Okay? Uh, maybe in the curriculum of the studies is a lot about the training of supercomputing. So we pretend to show our experience based mainly not just in, uh, in the study of the university, but as member of the supercomputing center of Castilla León. Uh, what we pretend is to see the direct interaction between STEM, uh, it's, it's very it's widespread uh, this concept, science, technology, engineering and mathematics, and non-STEM uh, subjects. Uh, in other words, how to uh, show subjects related with STEM to non-STEM or non-computing students okay, that we pretend uh, to show in this track. Uh, we are going to divide in four steps. First, I want to make an introduction uh, of what is supercomputing in terms of uh, what we do uh, tra training, in the training of supercomputing. Uh, to show you the materials and the method we use uh, to follow this research, the results that we, we have in this, in, in this research, and finally a, a brief discussion of the results. Well, this is a photo of the, the, the so-called pop corridor of the supercomputing center of Castilla León. Okay? Uh, we are a member of the Spanish supercomputing network, and um, one of the main goals of the supercomputing center, obviously, apart of giving services of calculation, um, virtual machines, and uh, stories of data, is to provide training to, to people. Okay? Many people, especially in, in some areas I'm going to show you, uh, demand this kind of training, and we are providing, uh, since the beginning of the center practically, uh, a lot of uh, training in, diverse, in, a diverse, uh, in a wide range of fields. Okay? This is a resume of, uh, I'm sorry if it's very clear, perhaps it's very small, but I'm going to show you uh, the type of course we have been doing in the supercomputing center of Castilla León. 
Uh, in the first years of the, the programs of, of supercomputing training, uh, we have a, a variety of fields, you know, related to ICE uh, technology, uh, also related with, uh, with uh, method scientific methodology, uh, engineering, etc. But during the last years, the higher demand is in the field of bioinformatics, okay? People, that is basic, uh, uh, that uh, the basic studies are related to biology, microbiology, etc., that uh, have a lot of knowledge in the fields, but they have the lack of how to use a supercomputer, okay? In order to know how to train data of genetic or whatever, okay? So, during the last year, we have a lot of demand in these fields. So, practically, currently, uh, we are uh, offering this type of courses because obviously we need a minimum of, of students and also in this type of courses we have plenty of people attending the courses, okay? In relation of the profile of people coming to the courses, uh, in this uh, short table you can see uh, a, a show uh, of two courses we have, okay? Uh, most of the people is a consolidated researcher, okay? People that is studying in a field and they need to make a, a deeper knowledge of, of how to use a supercomputer and they are, uh, as we say, a consolidated research, okay? The other prof profiles are in relation with uh, students of PhD, of doctorate students, and also a uh, doctorate with some experience, okay? But the most important profile is people <coughs> with experience, uh, with a very, uh, a very wide experience in the field, but that they need uh, how to use uh, to learn how to use a supercomputer. Um, uh, how we do it? We do it like a normal Q, of course, okay? Uh, as you can see in this uh, picture, uh, we have a, a classroom like this, okay? With laptops and computers. Um, students normally have a, a initial session, obviously, of theory, of what is a supercomputer. In fact, the first day, we have classes of Linux, because many people uh, don't know how to use Linux, okay? so they have a lack of experience in this kind of fields related to informatics. Once they have experience and they know how to use Linux, uh, we provide all the infrastructure that is the same that we are, they are going to use in their professional activity. Okay? So they have a connection directly to the supercomputer. And as you can see in these graphs, uh, when we are practicing how to use the supercomputer, the, the, the load of the supercomputer is very high okay? in terms of using calculation. Uh, and obviously the, the way of using, using the supercomputer is the same that you're going to use in your professional uh, activity, okay? So once they return to the centers, they're going to use uh, the supercomputer like in the same way they are using, using in, the, in the courses. What, what are the type of fields using a supercomputer? A lot of fields, okay? Many fields in the, in the, industri in the industry are using supercomputers in the industrial process, okay? But as I told you, uh, in the University of Leon or in the Supercomputing Center of Leon, the, the, the lack of, uh, of knowledge is related to biotechnology, okay? So this is the, the speciality of our center because, uh, of course, if you have an industry, you have a specialist on how, how to use a supercomputer in industrial processes. Uh, a lot of fields, we, we are in these slides, you can see examples of projects we have been working. Uh, we have been working in, work in projects related to cinema. And we have also been working in projects related to medicine and biology, especially in the field of genetics. Okay? They demand the use of a big volume of data and they need uh, an infrastructure as we provide in the supercomputing center. In fact, uh, two of the main users normally of our supercomputer are in the area of genetics are and in the area of methodology, okay? In the physics of the atmosphere. Because it's, there are two important groups of this university using the supercomputer facility we have. So, as normal users are this, but as, as students, we are focusing mainly in students using uh, supercomputing. Uh, they know, in order to know how to treat big volume of that, okay? What we do uh, for this study, we, we analyze a lot of uh, we make a, a wide literature review and we finally selected some studies uh, in, in, from the beginning of the study we, we have two phases uh, to uh, the first search uh, we consulted a lot of 
databases, professional databases, and we try to uh, focus our main investigation in 35, uh, 34 sorry, uh, final items where we extract all the information we need to have the conclusions we are uh, exposing now. Okay? For the results, we pretend mainly three objectives. First is to study uh, the field we identify of using supercomputing. Okay? We, we analyze all these articles and we pretend to show you uh, how is the, the variety of, of fields using supercomputers. The second is, once we have these fields, analyzing the type of computational, more, more specialized courses in relation of computing that use this supercomputer. And finally, we provide a simple uh, study uh, of relating the first uh, study of uh, fields of knowledge with the courses related to supercomputing. We try to provide and identify the, the better relation between variables. Okay? In the first step, in the first uh, objective we, we set, I'm sorry because I think that it's very small for the audience. Ah, it's maybe not too clear. Okay, as we can see here, uh, we have identified 51 uh, items or, or notes related to field of knowledge, okay? And as uh, we have seen, sorry, my head, uh, four are related to mathematics, uh, three uh, related to astronomy and astrophysics, uh, eight related to physical, uh, six of chemistry, chemistry, uh, eight life science, um, nine related, related to earth and space science, um, eleven related to science of technology, not just technology in terms of computations, but in relation of drug design, machine processing, etc. And uh, another like economy, one of the references, and another related to linguistics. Okay? So, as you can see in this table, it's a, a wide variety of fields that have been used in supercomputing. It's not just a, just a question of informatics. In fact, I'm going to show you later. We are now in a, in a course, we have a course this week, it's a coincidence, and we have just one informatic in the, in the course because he wants to see how to organize the informatic of the course. But the rest of the people is microbiologists, biologists, medicine, etc. Okay, so as you can see, we have a wide variety of fields that use supercomputing and need, uh, and not just using supercomputing, but they have identified a need of using a supercomputer. This is the graph of uh, the graph of the of, I have said you. Okay. Uh, obviously, um, <coughs> the most important is science and technology, but related to drug design, imaging processing, etc. And another important fields are the, the rest, especially life science, where we can identify biology, uh, biotechnology, etc. These fields are very important now in the use of supercomputers. And the second objective of the, the second result of the, the study is what we have identified as a type of computational courses related to supercomputing. Okay? Uh, in these tables, uh, that is, is more clear than the other, I <coughs> hope, uh, we have seen a, a great variety okay, of, of type of courses we have identified. One of the most important is programming. Obviously, people need to know how to use a supercomputer because as I told you, how to use the programs needed for supercomputers. Another important is uh, a variable a variety of courses related to computing. Uh, for instance, HPC technology, scalable computing, matrix calculation, a wide variety of courses. Okay? Um, those related to software, how to use software, because are, there are a lot of software specialized in different fields. Okay? Uh, system and architectures of how to use a supercomputing, data management, and a great variety of a lot of courses in different uh, questions. Okay, so as you can see here, that there is a a big uh, a big amount of courses that we need to identify, and especially some, something related to parallel computer. That is a, a very difficult field to study and even to find professionals to work in these fields. Okay, so whatever we do in this field is optimizing the services of the supercomputing center. And finally, the other, the other objective, the other result of the study was uh, this um, small study. 
Okay? We pretend to, uh, make, uh, to see the relation between the field and the computational courses. Okay? We have to mix these variables. The dependent variable dependent was the field of, um, the field of knowledge. In this case, we, we merge, we, we unify the fields, and in the first case, um, mathematics, astronomy, and astrophysics, physical and chemistry uh, was inside that, uh, the field that we, we mentioned as engineering, and the others, it is um, life science, earth and space science, science of technology, economy, and linguistic, were uh, included in the first model. Okay? So, we have this, uh, this differentiation in order to have the better uh, results possible. In this first slide, you can see um, the most direct uh, relation in, in the case of science is the programming. So programming is more related with this field of knowledge. And in the case of engineering, we have a, a high relation in computing, but the higher is in this mix of other type of computational courses. Okay? But uh, once we analyze the results, we have concluded that uh, in these two models I have present, um, in model one we have um, a better result in order to predict a value of f because it's lower than 0 0.05. Uh, this is not a condition of the model two, so we can conclude that uh, for having some conclusions, it's better model one than model two. Okay? This is the same that we can see in this uh, resume of the data, of the information. Okay? As you can see, in this coefficient, R, the square adjust is higher in the case of model 1 than in the case of model 2. So the conclusions uh, in this line are, are going to be better in the model 1 than in the model 2. Okay? And uh, trying to make a conclusion, uh, we have seen that uh, uh, it's a uh, it's very important to have um, a, a training in supercomputer, in supercomputer, because uh, we have seen that an adequate performance of the professionals using uh, supercomputers is based on, on the, <coughs> the studies they they have on this in this question. Finally, I have to to see that the result we have seen uh, included supercomputers in the learning process in a great variety of fields uh, generates a lot of opportunities to the learners. Okay. Obviously, uh, we have outcomes. In the first case, uh, in the first objective, we see the importance of the supercomputer in many fields. The uh, second objective is to identify clearly uh, how important is the, the use of, super, of computer national courses. And finally, uh, according to Model 1, uh, we appreciate uh, an important link between the field of knowledge in, re in relation of science and uh, programming. So programming is very important for this kind of things. Um, we have, uh, finally, to finish, to show you, this is an example of um, the, the survey we have once we finish the courses, okay? As you can see in the green, the green circle, um, in this first course, for instance, 15 students, they say, they say that they appreciate the total of the students, the whole of the class, they appreciate the initial of the first day, uh, showing them how to use Linux. So we can conclude that they don't have a, a, a deep knowledge in computational issues, so they need a basic course of Linux in order to know how to use the supercomputer. Okay? And finally, we have good marks in, in the general course we, we provide to the students. And uh, obviously we have some limitations that I'm describing here. Perhaps we need a higher number of studies, perhaps we, we need more data, more information, okay? But um, I, I have some conclusions of the paper. Uh, the most important conclusion is that the improvement, the improvement that provides the training in supercomputers are clear. In fact, many students we have had during this, this period in Leon, in the supercomputing center, uh, have succeeded making projects based, based in, the, in the studies we have, in the training they have in the supercomputing center of Castilla Leon. So I think that this it's all I think I am on time. <laughs> Thank, so, you. Thank you very much. Is there any question for the speaker in this case? Any issue? Uh, I will be, uh, uh, do you think that this questionnaire that you are using in, the, in these surveys can be used in another uh, supercomputing centers? Is it general enough or they have to be adjusted to 
with the focus of his over the super good person. In this case, this is a that uh, only this is a hand a homemade, I can say it's homemade survey. This one, it's homemade, okay? Uh, we have a greater study uh, that we have to present in another article or manuscript with another another more I hope I want to say a study survey, okay? This is a uh, made by our ourselves with, with our own knowledge, okay? Uh, it, it should be better to have a professional survey in order to know exactly uh, how to improve the, the result, how to improve the process of, of learning, in my opinion. But it's, it's, it's homemade, I mean. Are you listening? Thank you, Alan. The presentation is uh, analysis of uh, users' first contact with high performance computing and first approach with uh, apology researchers and will be presented by Emmanuel Tyler. <laughs> Having uh, 
some basic content and some uh, practical knowledge will uh, also uh, uh, will suppose that uh, using HPC will be interesting even more strongly than research which only has uh, a basic so, in our experiment, we have 29 volunteers from the toy department. They are, also they are uh, PhD students, postdoc, and senior researchers. They, have, they all have uh, a quite good background in life science, but they have no or minimal background in nursing. During their research, they study the, the behavior of animals. They use uh, an application known as Lab uh, Dog Tracker. Uh, this tool just allows to, to track uh, the location of dogs and humans uh, within the lab. The, the idea of the application is that by using the images of several cameras in the ceiling of the lab, they can uh, have ground truth data about the uh, the dogs uh, and the humans' location within the lab. Uh, this application is, is this video analysis is going to be demanding. Uh, just a brief example: a six-minute experiment will spend uh, one day uh, if you run the application in a uh, uh, workstation. So it's clear that high-performance computing will be very, very useful to such researchers. So we also uh, come with a, with a high PC environment, specifically Calendula from the Supercomputation Castilla uh, León. And it will be accessed by using the, the, the SLUR. For the evaluations, we are going to, to have three questionnaires, as I have said you before. They are all based on the Kip Patrick's evaluation model, but uh, of the four levels that this evaluation model has, we wish, uh, this study uh, will focus on the first uh, two levels, which has to do with the reaction and the learning of the participants. For the other levels, we will need more time, uh, probably uh, several years. Right? The idea is the, that the responses uh, to on the questionnaires will provide us information about the uh, drawbacks and also the possibilities that uh, such researchers receive on the using of high uh, performance computing. In addition to the questionnaires, we have two learning activities: the introduction talk, before, and the hands-off course. Regarding <coughs> the outline, the researchers will be divided into, into groups. Uh, each group will follow a different outline. The idea is that the first group will attend to the introductory talk, while the second will attend the introductory talk and uh, the hands-on course. And regarding the questionnaires, uh, the first one gathers some demographics data. Uh, and, help, and help us to establish uh, a baseline of the attitude and the previous uh, knowledge of these research uh, researchers regarding the HPC. The second one uh, allows uh, allow us to, to measure uh, how the introductory talks first on the first two, level, two levels of the Kilpatrick's model, and then the, the third questionnaire also measures the first two levels in the Kirkpatrick models, but in this case we can have the, the we can see the effect uh, of the whole stack. I mean, we can see the effect after uh, attending an introductory attack and after having some specific uh, HPC knowledge. Well, uh, I will show you the, the results of the first questionnaire. The, the three first charts on top 
so the distribution between gender, age, and status of the volunteers. The fourth one in the top. So uh, the ICT skills perception. Uh, you know, they they almost half of the of the researchers think that they are bad or very bad. Regarding the programming skills, it's even worse. More of, most of them uh, doesn't know anything about programming. They don't have any confidence in using HPC. Uh, just a few, just a few ones are planning to use HPC in their research, and um, yes, they are quite interested in having uh, a hands of training. Uh, we have. Uh, ask them uh, what they think that high performance computing is, and we have had a lot of funny, funny, funny answers. This is just uh, some of them. They they see things like everything is fast. I never heard of it. Computing big data, many computer working network. So you see, they don't have really uh, an accurate vision of high performance computing. So. After the introductory attack, uh, they were uh, they were they fill out the, the second questionnaire. Uh, this uh, this chat so the, their impression about the presentation itself and also uh, about the presenter. They are quite happy with them. You have the details there. I'm not going to go in that there. And they also uh, would recommend the presentation to other researchers. These other results are more interesting. Um, most of the participants in the geometry talk, after the geometry talk, they consider that they understand at least the core HPC concepts. Mm, most of them are, uh, you, uh, are planning to use HPC in their research and also uh, make a follow up research. And most of them, as you can see, are interesting. Uh, interesting having the hands-on training. So in conclusion, uh, I will talk about the first two hypotheses. Regarding the, the understanding of HPC concepts, we have, we come from, I never heard of it, and now uh, most researchers uh, at least uh, say that they uh, understand the most important concepts regarding HPC. If, if we look at the uh, update plans on using HPC, we have uh, we also can see that after the trade talk, most of them uh, could be interested in using it. And regarding the interest uh, in a uh, in that uh, training, you can see also that and they were quite interested at first. Now, after the introductory talk, they are more interested in how most uh, and in their training in HPC. And regarding the work in progress, this is a work in progress. We haven't finished our analysis. Uh, we now want to see uh, the results after the hands-on course. Uh, the second group uh, has attended to the hands-on course and they have filled the, the, the third question, but that was uh, last week. So we haven't analyzed all the data uh, by now. And, uh, and we can uh, say that the third hypothesis is, is, is valid. We guess we expect this, but we can say it at the time. And this is it. So if you have any questions, Any question for the speaker? Yes, one question is this, uh, this is a particular area we focus a uh, group of researchers in a very specific area. And this is a quality. Uh, what is your opinion about uh, this? Is, this could be extended to other types of uh, researchers in the same field in by your life or in science? I think in life science in particular, but in many other science, uh, 
there is a drawback regarding the, the instruction that people need in order to use uh, an HPC environment. It's true that in some areas like bioinformatics, uh, they use PASC, but it is because they have a lot of uh, ICT instruction in their degrees. Uh, in meteorology, for instance, uh, there is uh, a huge use of, of, of high performance computer, but they usually need a, a, a specific expert. You know that the, the the meteorology projects that you have in Skyle, uh, the software, I have developed the software for them because they, they have the ideas, they know it was good, but they don't have the knowledge to, to, to apply that. So if they want to, to not rely all the time in, in ICT professionals, they will need, they will need uh, to improve their ICT uh, training. Because it's not true. But I, I'm not talking about programming because, uh, of course, it's very difficult. I mean, just me using uh, most user, users that doesn't even know how to use a, a Linux terminal, uh, doesn't know what Slurm is. So you need uh, a very basic uh, format uh, instruction for, for a big amount of researchers. Any other questions or issues? Thank you. Um, last presentation is uh, facilitating the learning process in parallel computing by using Eastern processing and will be presented by Lydia Sanchez. My presentation, I will start with an introduction of the problem, then I will explain what we have done, and then I will uh, present the results and the conclusions. Okay, nowadays, uh, everyone is aware of the technology that we have, and we know that we can do everything with our mobile or from our home, and everything is connected. But, although we know all these robots and so on, our students keep program uh, for the sequential model or uh, the sequential <coughs> computer. So the thing is, they have to think in parallel. So this skill is not easy to achieve and even is difficult also to, to measure if they have acquired this, this skill. So there are people who just uh, measure the final result, they do an exam, if they pass, uh, uh, they have acquired this uh, skill and if not, they, they, they don't. Other measure the work that they have been de delivering during their lessons. And also, you have to measure how they work in team. Uh, because nowadays, you know, uh, everyone has to work with more people. So we have uh, considered the Eastern messaging application in order to to, to use it as a tool for the practical assignment of the, of the site. Why? Because the students are very active users of this technology. Uh, they use this technology even more than phone or email. And even they don't con consider this as a technology. If you say, okay, we are going to use this application, they say, well, it's a common way to communicate. So for them, uh, it's a very good tool to increase the uh, participation and also the, the interactivity with the other students. However, there is a big drawback that is a distraction. If they are playing with their mobiles, I don't know if you are in the lessons and you do a Kahoot or a Socrative, they take their mobiles and then you don't know very well if they are working with, uh, with uh, the questionnaire or they are doing other things. So this is a, a big drawback. About the method, we have uh, considered one subject that is in the first year of the master's degree at, uh, in computer science here in, in Leo. Uh, it's named High Performance Computing and we teach them how they can program in parallel with, with OpenMP, MPI uh, and CUDA and also some topics about architecture and more things but uh, we are talking about file programming especially. And uh, we do a collaboration with the University of Groningen 
in the Netherlands uh, because my supervisor of my thesis is a teacher there of the parallel computing science. So we, uh, during some years, we share uh, assignments and we measure how they are doing uh, in order to uh, to do like the same subject in two different universities. Okay. Uh, the University of Groningen is quite in the top 100 of the university and Leon is not so hard. <laughs> so this is a, a chance to, to, get, to get this knowledge to here. Okay, we, we have a practical assignment in this subject that they have to solve a, a real problem and they have to use parallel programming. Uh, the problem was uh, originally uh, written in, in Fortran, but now it's translated to, to C. And uh, basically, they have to use a boundary element method that is quite similar to the finite element method that maybe is most known. And they have to solve a thermoelastic problem uh, between three dimensional solids. Uh, the code is already written, so they, they have this sequential code. And basically, uh, what they, this code does is to merge the solids uh, into elements and then uh, some coefficients are computed. Uh, they have to solve uh, integrals from one element to, to another. So you have n elements, you have to do n square integrals. And also there are more computation like in some cases, these elements have to be subdivided into a smaller elements, so you have more computation to do. And also, you can consider symmetries. So, either your program, uh, after your uh, program is defined just uh, for one square, maybe you have four times integrals to do because it's uh, symmetric to both elements, for example. So, all this computation uh, can be run on parallel. And also, with this number of more things, uh, an equation system is built and it's, it has to be solved. Uh, one for the thermal problem and one for the thermoelastic problem. So, these are the, the main uh, topics of this code. And the equation system is, um, is a, a good candidate to be run on parallel because there are many techniques that we study during the lessons. So they can apply these techniques to this uh, code. And also the coefficient computation is independent. It's a double uh, for loop. Um, you have to do some intervals, analytic if it's the same element, uh, or numerical if it's a different element. And then you have to, uh, to you can do this uh, on parallel because they are independent. So this is the sequential algorithm that they have. And they have to use uh, different libraries like OpenMP, MPI, CUDA, OpenCL to run this code in, in, in parallel. And they have to work as a team. So we are using the methodology comprehensive training model of the teamwork for competency. And uh, they have to decide uh, how can they uh, approach this, uh, this problem. And we are using the Scalis and Lendula Supercomputer Castelleo uh, to run the, the program from parallel. In the case of uh, CUDA and OpenCL, we use a local server that we have in our lab so they can connect and use the GPU that is there. Uh, to do this, we have used the GitHub uh, repository for the code and the Gitter for instant messaging. And we consider five chat rules. One for objectives, uh, because we give them the sequential code and say, okay, now you have to apply to this sequential code all the things that you have seen during the lessons, during the practical lessons. And uh, then they have to decide what they want to do. Like, for example, okay, we are going to use OpenMP to run on parallel this for loop and we are going to use some library to use to do the system the solution the, the equation of uh, the system equation solution and so on and depending on the number of people they have to decide what, uh, what they want to do and they have to do it so this uh, chart one um, is for these uh, objectives and the ones that they are identified like the final goals are written in a week so everyone knows uh, 
which are the objectives of the, of the work. Also, there is another chat room about responsibilities. That means who is in charge of each task to do. That this doesn't, this doesn't, doesn't mean that this is the only people or the only student that is going to work there. It's the, the people that is in charge. So if someone has a problem, everyone wants to help uh, to everyone, okay? Because they are working on, on a team. Also, there is a chat for planning where uh, they decided uh, what they are going to do first, how much time uh, is going to take, and so on. And also, we have to do a Gantt uh, planification uh, and everything that is going to be gathered in a, in a wiki. Also, they have a chat room for the norms. That means, uh, for example, let's say, okay, if you are working, you have to answer uh, before maybe five, five hours of a message. <coughs> or you have to every day upload some code or whatever. They, they put the notes so they can uh, follow everyone that everyone is working and so on. And finally, there is a chat room for the execution where um, the students discuss about the errors they are having, the problems they are having, and, and all of them are uh, helping them to, the, to achieve the solution. In all the rooms, also... Uh, ...with this kind of translation, because sometimes words in English is, is different, obviously, in, in Portuguese, so if you have some problems with this translation, because sometimes it doesn't mean the same, you know, sometimes it could be a different meaning, so do you have difficulties to translate? Uh, I didn't find uh, uh, more difficult in translate, mm -hmm. but uh, some questionnaires that I see in the literature, some of the questions I can't apply to my case, okay. because it's related to another country mm -hmm. and it doesn't apply to Portugal, okay. so we need to, do, to select yeah. The, the things that uh, can Applied. be applied. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, so Carlos, it's you. Be fast, please. Thanks too much. I'm starting to time. <laughs> of uh, what is sustainable, what is not. Probably the most, uh, the most quoted citation is uh, from the, our common future, who said um, simply that to provide our needs without compromising future generations. So this is a very philosophic um, <coughs> and a broad definition. Uh, for, for instance, for engineers, it's very hard to live with this. For me, this is very mu much more simple. The system is that concerned the exact restore the resource to obtain uh, um, some effect. Okay, if you are expend more, is not efficient. After all, are continuously <coughs> searching for a um, more efficient system. Let's go to the engineering training labs. What we have inside labs? Perfectly a bench, length of instruments. <coughs> This is important because the students need you to feel it um, and to have evidence. It's a very important word for me, evidence. 
We are talking with nature. We are asked to nature, what happened if and the nature answered me? And if the nature answers me, the nature has always right. Okay, this is a kind of evidence. And uh, <coughs> we need something like that. The problem is that we have one student, a lot of instruments and so on. Okay. Uh, let's try if you have another let's say, possibility to do the same. Uh, traditionally, we consume a lot of resources, components and so on, so on, so on. We have a lot, we need to have facilities, and uh, you can classify this solution in this way. Not a very good solution in terms of sustainable, sustainable things. Uh, we have traditionally hands-on. Um, hands-on is important, but uh, what we have very often during our classes, we make some experimentations and for some reason we, can, we, we destroy components. Okay, this, is, uh, this is also important because we need to know uh, learning from the, the failing. Okay. It's important because the new generation is very afraid of failing. They are a bit shy. Mm -hmm. Well, it is natural. They feel completely different. I felt so. I burned the resistor. So. That is the place of bed. No. Okay. So. But the thing is, it's very often to exceed the, the, the limits on the cost to be worked out some components. Okay? In terms of teaching, it's very good. In terms of sustainable things, is not so good like that. So the use of uh, remote labs could be, let's say, for some things, for some parts of the, 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 the teaching, not for the first, but as a complement, could be a very interesting. So remote labs completely satisfy three of the set of the, um, objective learnings. Experiment, device experiment approach, specify equipment, procedures, implement this process, interpretate the, 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 the data and so on, so on, so on. Learn from failure. This is one objective. It's not something we should avoid, okay? Identify outcomes due to faulty equipments, parts, code in a programming. Um, do the process or design and re- engineer the solution or to obtain the desired effect and so on. The activity is your field. <laughs> Demonstrate appropriate levels of independent creativity, capability and real world problem solving. So all these objectives can be achieved with remote parts. When what we have in real life. We have components. This is my way of doing things. I have several packets. Inside each packet, we have several components. I distribute the components by each group of students. And in the end, I want to return the same packet. And the same packet should be prepared to be <laughs> sent to the next group. It's hard. I said, please. <laughs> send me back the pack in the very same condition as I gave them. Second, please pass me again, return me the packet in the same conditions as I pass you. Third, please return me the packet in the very same conditions I pass you. Clear. At the end of class. Professor, we have some components here in the bench who we can put in some... No! <laughs> okay. But in this way, in fact, I try to don't have uh, a lot of waste because uh, typically they, 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 they put the components out of the place and so on and uh, in the end we must put everything in the trash. This way, I have the same components during a lot of years, a lot, I think, five, seven years, I have the same components. Well, sometimes they burn it and you have to replace them, most of them are the same. And what happened? This. <laughs> After a lot of manipulations, they broke. Okay. 
and then we have no chance to, to avoid this kind of things. Okay, the same in the transistors. It's very much more often because the transistors they broken down and very easily. Uh, integrated circuits, the, the pins sometimes they are bent. If you try to put in this correctly, they broke. Mm -hmm. We have this. And um, what we have in terms of alternative for this part, remember, for this part only, we can have the VC remote lab. Uh, wait, what is the VC remote lab? Is a platform in which we have everything in terms of uh, component, in terms of, of um, instruments are there, or supply, or meter, uh, or oscilloscope, function generation, so on. They are okay, located here. Okay. We have components, okay. When we build up the circuit, what we have? Instruments, components, and we connect them in a way. And this connecting may form a, a, a matrix of a switch, okay? <laughs> The, the students did. They have this virtual uh, breadboard. They placed components there, okay, in the correct way. We have here, oh, you can hit that vehicle. This is the power supply, this is function generator, oscilloscope, and multimeter, okay. We drag the components from here, we make some connections, and then you click perform experiment. That in, in this very exact moment, the, the, all this setup is sent for a real experimental platform. The experiment was performed, really performed, not simulated, really performed, and the data were returned for students. Everything less than one second. Less than one second. Okay? That means you can have several students, when hundreds the students make the same because you can use the very same platform for a lot of students, okay? Uh, of course, if you fail something, the system says no, you are in the correct way. So, redesign because you are making um, bad things, okay? And in this way, we don't burn out components because you have only one chip, or you do it right, in the right way, or the, 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 the experiment is not preferred. So, we don't have trash in this view, okay? I'm not saying it's not important the hands-on um, classes. Yes, they are important. The thing is, after some sessions, when the students want to say, what if, what if, what if, they don't, uh, they don't learn more about the oscilloscope and so on. No, they, they have skills good enough. They are just trying what happened according to theory and so on. Oh, I increased the resistor and what happened? Yeah, it makes sense, okay. But this, for this kind of things, I think that this kind of lab could be some advantage, okay. Uh, we have here an experiment, and we have already um, talked about this, okay. And components are key and so on, so on, so on, and so on. Now we have seen an experiment. It was performed at Colleague Mine. In fact, should be Ricardo should make this presentation.